I thought I would share how I did uh, electric fan conversion on my GMT 400 truck. Um, there's many ways to do this, many combinations. Um, internet's got a lot of suggestions. Um, what I'm working with is a 28 inch radiator. That means 28 inches between the tanks. So what I did was I got a fan shroud slash radiator support from a V6 truck out of the bone yard for about $8. And what I did was simply cut it where you have the uh, transition to where it angles over to go to the big bell shape for the mechanical fan. And trimmed it across the top, pretty much in line with that. The top you can bring out maybe a quarter of an inch, give you a little bit of extra meat to work with when you uh, get it all together when you get the uh, fan assembly carrier attached to this. Um, where the joins are, I shaved those down so they're the same. This is the fan assembly. I got this from a 2008 Chrysler Sebring 2.7 liter V6. What I did basically was crawl the bone yard with a tape measure and find something that was about the right height and about the right width. Uh, for this, the width was perfect. Height is about an inch short, and I'll show you that in a minute. Also, the upper piece that comes attached to this um, will be useful. So you can just leave this on the fan assembly if you want to go get one of these and try this and uh, it'll be included in the price that you pay for the fan assembly, which I want to say I paid about $26, $27, something like that. Um, wiring harness I just kind of put together on my own using the original connectors. Snipped them out here, so we got four wires, heavy gauge. And what I'm going to control them with is this product from Doral, uh, number 16795. I'll uh, go into detail about that in a little bit, um, but it's a standalone fan controller with its own temperature sensor. Um, if you've got data logging, you can see your actual coolant sender temps. Uh, you can pretty much coordinate with that and get a good idea of where you are in, in terms of temp. It's just got a manual dial on it. So you get that turning on and off where you want with reference to the uh, coolant temp sensor um, through your logging computer. So, hang on a sec, let me uh, get these parts together and I'll show you the next, next step. First, the other side of the fan assembly. You've got this rib on both sides and you've got a little bit of a lip uh, top and bottom. You've got these tabs, we can clean those up so they won't interfere with oil cooler, transmission cooler lines, radiator hoses, that sort of thing. All right, give me a second. Okay, the ribs I showed you on this fan assembly fit nicely just inside your corners, except for this corner. So what we've got to do is to make a notch for this lower lip and right here, a notch for the rib. So it fits nice and flush at this corner. Everything else is pretty easy. Just uh, snug these up to the corners. And you've got this little bit of a gap at the top. You can see that's that's not much. So this is where we're going to pop a couple of screws. Probably one in the center, one on either end. Maybe four and five, about halfway between. And then this piece comes in handy. The bottom edge of it, or what is the top edge, um, sitting on the cart came from, is rubberized. The rest of it's hard plastic. So what we can do, we can take this, slide it in the bottom, so tuck it in here, just a second, and there we go. So that fills up nicely across all the way, covers that gap, we'll figure out a way to uh, probably trim this top a little bit off 
And then just uh, shoot some screws into the bottom of these. They won't be load bearing so much. Um, just to keep the airflow trapped where we want it without a, a big leak here at the bottom. So you see these rubber fingers are here at the bottom and they poke out a little bit. So that's nice and soft material against our radiator um, rows. By the way, this is a spare radiator I'm just using for mocking up. But here we have transmission cooler lines, lower radiator hose. That doesn't really interfere, but we can we can trim that off. This one barely, maybe, but we can trim that off too. Uh, this side definitely got to take that one off with the upper radiator hose, oil cooler line top, and bottom are pretty much clear for this one. But we'll go ahead and zip this off as well. You can see we've got this corner tucked in, so we're completely airtight-ish uh, at this corner and all the way across the bottom. For all practical intents and purposes with some soft material at the bottom of this um, so we don't harm our radiator rows and fins wiring harness i added this purple wire in here i want to say that uh, one of these was a, a common ground and then two uh two powers and a relay maybe two relays i forget exactly but i did get this connector out of the car it came from plus the wire. I just want to have a positive and a negative for both fans so I can run it off of this controller. Let me get this out of the box and we'll go through that. Okay, so let's have a look inside the uh, fan controller I'm going to use for this. Hopefully in the next two or three weeks I'll have a chance to put all this uh, in the truck. I'll get some video of that and share that up. Um, works pretty tight right now, so we'll see how it goes on time. Again, this is the 16795 kit. Um, here's the diagram uh, They'll have you uh, hook it up to control either a single fan or dual in this case too Get a close-up of the uh, The box here where the connectors are you got a positive and negative you've got a turn on wire For the air conditioning and they give you green wire for that you It's either 10 or 12 gauge wire for your power leads for your fans Here's the temp sensor. It has an adhesive pad on it. And that goes at the, I want you to put it at the bottom corner of the radiator, somewhere in this area where they say it's uh, uh, gonna be good and warm for reference. So they also give you the circuit breaker for it, uh, a bunch of ring terminals, everything you need. A couple of vampire taps, I hate those. Solder your stuff up if you, if you can, possibly. It's just, it's just better. Um, one more thing about this unit. It is not watertight, but it is water resistant. I'll give you a little bit of foam at the ends where the wires come in and out. So ideal mounting place would be somewhere fender well, behind your headlamp assembly, somewhere where it's not gonna get saturation from uh, Rainwater just streaming in around some part near the front. Um, use common sense. Make sure it's in a, in a place where it can uh, avoid immersion. If you go through deep puddles, if you got four-wheel drive and you like to get um, high in the fender well in the water. Or heck, you could probably mount this thing inside if you really wanted to. Um, anyway, controller. Fan and fan shroud assembly. And the depth is pretty good. It's actually really good. These fans are, let's see how big they are. Give you a reference on that. These fans are 13 inches. Roughly. At least 12, but I think that's 13. So, and again, this is from 2008 Chrysler Sebring 2.7. Um, if you got a 34 inch radiator, take your tape measure of the boneyard, start looking, find something that fits. Hope that helps. Thanks for looking.